We have no argument with the people of Iraq. Indeed, for the innocents caught in this conflict, I pray for their safety. You know, yeah, I think we're probably hurting them, but I really don't have any idea how, how bad. Along with the rest of America, I watched the war on television. But I kept thinking, part of this story is missing. I could find statistics on how many Iraqi tanks were destroyed, but no one could tell me how many Iraqi children died. And after the war ended, news of Iraq essentially disappeared. So I went to Baghdad to try to find out what happened to the Iraqi people. Iraq was sad, beautiful, and sometimes strange. Like all other journalists, I was assigned a government guide. Since English speakers were in short supply, I worked with Kareem, who spoke Spanish. Like Big Brother, Saddam's image was everywhere. He seized power in 1979, and his first act as president was to order the execution of 130 of his party officials. But despite the government's relentless indoctrination and anti-American sentiments, Iraqi children and families were surprisingly welcoming. The forefathers of these families built the ancient cities of Sumer and Babylon here in Iraq, then called Mesopotamia. I wanted to interview Iraqi children and their families, and after long negotiations with the Ministry of Information, I was granted permission to film at Iraqi schools. My name, the books. It's I live in Baghdad. At the al ramaniya school, I met Hala Wael. She introduced me to her parents, who told me about their memories of Iowa. I have spent six years at the States, in the, at Iowa State University, in fact, at Iowa College of Vet Medicine, back in 1978. And the daughter is, in fact, born in the States in 1979. I have enjoyed my time, in fact. Your country is beautiful. I learn a lot of things in uh, American cooks and everything, almost everything. I enjoy it very much. In fact, I have lots of friends and I'm still keeping in contact with them, writing letters and I ask them for a favor to send me an article or something like that. Uh, you know, scientific things. I like the place and the peoples. I like them. And uh, I like pizza and hamburgers. Yeah, I like it. Between the Iraqi government, which discourages all contact with foreigners, the Persian Gulf War and the international embargo, <laughs> it was a relief to be so warmly received. Other families, like the Jamais, who live in this traditional Shia Muslim neighborhood, also welcome me. 
عرفيات كل العاصمة من عاصمة كلها حبل وعاصمة العراق وعاصمة قديمة يعني من منذ زمن طويل وأنا عشت بها وترى رأيت بها أنا وأولادي لا حبل بغداد هاي أم بعيها مرة كبيرة يعني وأنا في العمر تقريب خمسة وأربعين أزية أنا يعني هنا أنا وولدي يعني الشايب جد أبو زوجي يعني ولايتنا بغداد إحنا هنا بغداد لا يعني أنا قلت يعني من بداية أنا أحب الدكتورة أحب الدكتورة وأدى صير بها خالة ملي عليها ما أحب أن أكون بالجيش أو جندي أو أي رتبة ما أكون نصح بها At Baghdad University, I met Doa Sadoun, a student of English literature. She also invited me to meet her family. They live in the Greenwich village of Baghdad, where her parents own a bookstore. This place was uh, a different place. It was an empty room. It was a kitchen. Me and my mother uh, cleaned the dirty thing, and uh, my father uh, made it uh, as it, uh, as you see it. Have you read uh, Arthur Haley's book? Arthur Haley. We had beautiful lectures once a month in this small place. Discussions happened every every hour. It was very beautiful and it was full of people. Painters, sculptures, uh, authors, uh, poets. Everybody was coming and going until the blockers happened. And now we see nobody. Nowadays, it's, um, there is no people came to buy books. No one wants to buy books. They want to buy food. The war and the international embargo radically changed the lives of everyone I met in Iraq. The war in Iraq meant endless bombings, sleepless nights, and death. The government kept telling us that get prepared, get enough food, get water, because the war might be coming. But I was staying at the States, and I know the Americans. Even if war is going to happen between Iraq and America, they are not going to bomb Baghdad. We don't have army. We have nothing in here. Why they are coming? So I was not prepared at all. And I was amazed. Even when the plane was bombing, down there in the shelter, several of my friends were asking, come on, it's happening. I said, no, they must be not American. Somebody else is bombing. The American may be fighting at the front, but not in Baghdad. There were no army at all in Baghdad. While Hala's family scavenged for food and water during the 43-day war, the Jamais sought safety in this market. They didn't want to sleep at home out of fear their house would collapse during the nightly bombings. <laughs> His children lived, but others didn't. <laughs> الشعر طاحت يا بيتنا أخوي الصغير مات رأساً أدين نقلوا إلى المستشفى تو. Meanwhile, Doa countered her fears of chemical warfare with a shower curtain. 
uh, Schwarzkopf said that he will uh, fold yeah. the, throw uh, chemical w weapons and he will use it. Then we, uh, we think about something that protects us from this chemical weapons. So we made clothes to protect us, handmaids, to dress it if something will happen. We were left away. Nobody thought of us. Even those who watched the media didn't have the decency of saying what was on the other side. Where are the people who were hit by these telegames? Yes, I feel isolated. Because I used to believe in democracy. I used to believe in, in people wanting to know and demanding from the media to tell them the story, the, the real story. Where are these people? Not only the, the, the politicians. No, I'm not talking about politicians. I'm talking about the ordinary people. Didn't they ask these tons and tons of, of, of explosives thrown? Where did they fall? On whom? What happened there? On the 33rd day of the war, the Amaria shelter was bombed. Allied forces mistook the civilian shelter for a military bunker, and at least 400 women and children died. Their survivors have written their names on the walls of the shelter. Her friend was uh, in the sixth primary school. She was like her age, 11 years old. Uh, they were two good friends and uh, she died in the Amaria. Her family, they went to the Amaria and uh, at night it exploded. And when she died, they we couldn't find her body. She was her friend. She loved her so much. She was playing with her and reading and writing everything with her. She was loving her. She, until she dies, she was sad about her. And she very missed her. Iraqi people do not have the freedom to publicly criticize the actions of Saddam's government. But many Iraqis whispered to me in private that they disagreed with the invasion of Kuwait. Now they just wanted to put the war behind them, but the international embargo won't let them. Everything's changed. Uh, before the war we can buy everything and we can eat uh, everything, but uh, after the war, I don't know, uh, everything changed. What changed is that the United Nations enforced its international embargo, which forbids the export of Iraqi oil and the import of all products to Iraq, with the exceptions of food and medicine. Although some smuggled goods were available, most Iraqis could not afford to buy them. With no money or goods legally entering the country, the economy was in turmoil. Inflation was rampant and food prices nearly doubled during my 32-day visit. Although food and medicine are exempted from the embargo, with no oil sales, the Iraqi government does not have the funds to buy them. Medicine was essentially unavailable and the limited stock of food was beyond the means of all but the most affluent Iraqi families. I'm an assistant professor, and I'm getting, I would say, three, four times the salary of an average Iraqis. And I am, I am having difficult time. A pair of shoes may, may cost more than what I'm getting all the month as a salary for my kid. So how am I going to live? 
How are you going to spend on four kids? It's very difficult. All the times. I feel nervous, tense, tired. I'm not feeling comfortable. Nobody is talking about lifting it. Even in the near future, even if they say that the sanction will be lifted after a year, somebody can arrange himself in that way and I could sell something and stay for a year. But the price is every day is changing. And with the sanction continue for another 60 days, the price is going double. The sanction is much more effective and hurtful, you know, against the Iraqis. If you are thinking they are affecting the government, they are wrong, completely wrong. But the Iraqi people are suffering. because of the dirty water during the war I have a problem in my kidneys kidneys I didn't even know what's uh, what's wrong because there is no uh, x-ray x-ray x, -ray. x -ray. Till till nowadays, I don't know what's what's wrong. We can't be sure about it. X-rays are kept for uh, major uh, sicknesses. So she has the problem, and we keep give, we keep uh, giving her herbs, and that's it. From a representative of Middle East Council of Churches, I learned that Chaldean Christian families have also been hit very hard by the war and the embargo. Traditionally, Iraqi Christians have lived in farming communities in the north. But when fighting broke out between Kurds and the Iraqi government, the Christians were not trusted by either side and were forced to flee from their prosperous farms. Many resettled in the poorer areas of Baghdad. الأكثر العوائل متى عندهم رصيد عندهم بالبنوك متوفرين لكن هذول كانوا يعيشون على العمل مالت من نسوان يروحون ينظفون البنوك ينظفون العمارات والصغار مثل ما قلنا أكثرية هما من هال ينظفون الأعذية والبورتر حمالين فهذا بوقتها أيضا يعني تقريبا توقف حتى العمل ما نتم فانا كنت افتح الكنيسه كنت تشوف هاي الكنيسه عوائل ليل ونهار through the support of middle east council of churches the priest has been providing a supplemental feeding program for the children of these unemployed families <تصفيق> Although I was first struck by the beauty of these children, I later realized their big eyes, translucent skin, and bird-like limbs were partly the result of malnutrition. يعني الناس اللي كنشوفهم أمامنا طعنات نسميها أو توترات أو تنعكس إلى ثلاث أربع أشياء أنا برأيي يعني. 
فهذه يعني خدمة الكنيسة والمجتمع المجتمع وتمجيد الرب ليس لي هدف آخر I left the church feeling encouraged that someone was watching out for these children. But when I went to Iraqi hospitals and saw the endless rows of malnourished infants, I felt hopeless. These babies were born after the invasion of Kuwait, and they're probably going to die before the sanctions are lifted. This child came to the hospital uh, three weeks ago as a case of kwashiorkor. He developed uh, ulceration of the both legs because of malnutrition and secondary infection. One week ago, he started uh, to close his eyes. He has got the first uh, signs of xerophthalmia, which is vitamin A deficiency. We used to see such cases about uh, in the 60s, but we stopped seeing uh, cases of malnutrition and vitamins, multiple vitamin deficiency for since the early 70s until after the war. Malnourishment, of course, is abundant. Because the food is very expensive, everything is costing now between 50, 40 times what its price before the war. And the people cannot afford to buy it. <laughs> الحليب غالي حصار علينا نسالبنا الله ان شاء الله يفك الحصار We've sent 10 medical delegations to Iraq since the ceasefire What we see when we go back every few months is um, it's really a, a situation which is sadder and more depressing and more oppressive Well access to some medicine has improved it's um, very random unpredictable um, and clearly nothing that one could build a health care system on. The important drugs we don't have now are, uh, as, as uh, you have heard before, is insulin, which is very essential uh, for diabetic children. We feel hopeless when we face a child with diabetes and we cannot, we don't have insulin to give them. The hypodermic needles are uh, non-existing since two months. We don't have hydrocortisone. We don't have uh, most of the drugs for asthma. We don't have it now. A child comes to the hospital and with fever, and we, we, we don't have antibiotic to give to the child. And uh, fluids, intravenous fluids, they are very scarce. We must uh, choose between patients to to see which one is the worst to give uh, the worst uh, affected uh, child the intravenous fluid. The idea that the Iraqi people deserve this for having supported Saddam is completely preposterous. And, uh, and uh, Americans who, who, who hold this view feel that, uh, that Iraqi children are different than American children and that the life is cheap in Iraq. Until you start feeling that, you know, the inherent worth of, of a human life is the same whether they're Palestinian or Israeli or Iraqi, I mean, there's going to be no solution to this problem at all. I feel, at the same time, very much frustrated and uh, angry, sad, because the child shouldn't suffer because of uh, uh, politic, for political reason. I think it's uh, no use to ask the politician in the United States, but I would like to ask uh, the people of the United States, because after all, the government of the United States is uh, doing this in their names. If uh, 
if the American people will imagine that they are strangling children here to death and blinding them, I don't think they will agree. pizza and hamburgers. We have no argument with the people of Iraq. Indeed, for the innocents caught in this conflict, I pray for their safety. <laughs> 